Good morning. Welcome to Tara at Home. I'm here with Tara Hansen Ricks, and you are from Tara, so yes. part of the Tara family. And we were talking about this fabulous winter market that we have coming up for Tara. And uh, this is something so fun for the community. People look forward to this opportunity to go and have all kinds of great vendors all under one roof. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're actually at uh, Drummond Farms right now, right? Right. We are. We are in their apple shack, mm -hmm. and uh, they do some of the production in the back here as well. So, mm -hmm. and uh, this is actually going to be one of the vendors. Of yes, our it is. Yeah, uh, Drummond Farms is going to be one of our vendors. Uh, they're actually bringing apples that you can't even get at the grocery store so mm -hmm. we're super excited to have them at the market yeah that's kind of fun right so yeah. apples and cider and all kinds of great offerings and uh, again it's a you know great promotion for a lot of the the local businesses that we have in our community all under one roof at our Milton location right right, right. yeah so we are planning on having over 40 vendors mm -hmm. um, in many different categories mm -hmm. uh, we're going to have baked goods mm -hmm. um, and not just uh, farm baked goods which mm -hmm. everybody's looking forward to having as well mm -hmm. but we also have baked goods in a number of varieties. We have uh, sugar-free, gluten-free, uh, vegan, so mm -hmm. any of your food intolerances, food allergies, uh, we can accommodate them that's at the market. That's great, and that's the great thing about the market. So the market's running for how long? Uh, 13 weeks, okay. so it starts January the 11th, mm -hmm. and it goes to April 5th. Um, okay. It's gonna be running from 10 a.m. to 3 p.m. every Saturday every in Milton. Saturday. Yeah. Not fun, though, and that's the great part, is you get, you know, and it's really, it's a family thing, right? Mm -hmm. And so you get your kids out there, and you get to kind of go back to how things used to be, where people would go to markets and and just you know browse around and have a good time and it's all about the environment too so you guys are kind of creating sort of a, a fun atmosphere as well for yeah people. we're doing a tropical environment mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to have seating areas we're gonna have a huge pond in the middle we're gonna have decks around the pond mm -hmm. um, we're gonna have bright colors market umbrellas all around so we're so. pretending it's not the dead of winter exactly <laughs> we're gonna have all our tropicals around so it is actually lovely it's beautiful mm -hmm. it's nice and warm it's, it's warm. a great escape from winter mm -hmm. uh, to come to the market. That's the cool part. So it's a winter market, but it's actually warm inside. So, yeah, you know, because some people are used to adventuring off to winter markets that are outside and quite chilly. And then, yes. you know, not sure if they want to go, but that's the good part about a great, what a great thing to do on a Saturday morning with a family, you know, get up. And uh, again, you could probably eat your way through the market as well, yes. because there are lots of <laughs> treats and lots of things for people to try, right? Exactly. Exactly. Um, there's a lot of the vendors are doing samples. Mm -hmm. um, we we're going to have coffee there. Mm -hmm. And so you don't even need to eat. You can just come on down. You can mm -hmm. get your coffee. You can get baked goods, you can mm -hmm. get your lunch, you can get your dinner. Mm -hmm. um, we have produce. Uh, mm, we have a okay. couple produce vendors actually. So, um, and we have eggs, we have honey, we have meat. So basically, you can come and buy your buy your groceries. I was gonna say, yeah, and that's a little bit more fun, right? You know, you know, uh, we, we know we love our local grocers, um, mm -hmm. but it is really nice to be able to go. And I think the cool part about this is a lot of times you're getting you're getting more up close and personal yeah. with with local farmers and people that are producing, uh, whether it's again honey. Or, or fresh soaps that are actually manufacturing making these right yes that's the that's I think the great part is you can have a conversation yeah exactly and and and, and meet the people that are connected to this product mm -hmm. you know again just just honey in itself like how great is that yeah, yeah. to buy local honey mm -hmm. um, but you know as you're saying like just walking around and the whole experience of it all yeah um, so just uh, again give us a lay of the land of some of the other things people can see um, they can expect to see cheeses mm -hmm. uh, cured meats mm -hmm. uh, meat pies uh, we said baked goods. We're mm -hmm. going to have crafts uh, from local crafters, uh, just a few in and about in the okay. market. Some really, really unique things. Mm -hmm. Um, we are going to have, I'm just trying to think of all mm -hmm. of the vendors off the top of my head. Yeah, well, some of them are top <laughs> yeah. secret too, right? Exactly. So it's all about, it, that's the thing, it's all about, and I know there's a lot of vendors that really want to be part of this market, mm -hmm. um, you know, because we had great success last year with our markets, and, and a lot of people really want to be part of this. And it was amazing how it just yeah. took off. Oh, it There was did. a lot of buzz on Facebook, and yeah. there was a lot of buzz. People were walking up to me saying, oh my gosh, the market is so fantastic, it's busy, it's fun, mm -hmm. you know, and, and so there are a lot of vendors themselves, vendors watching right now, they're like, I want to get in that market, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> because, but again, it's, uh, you know, we've, we're running for the period of time that we are. Exactly. And, uh, and it's great because, you know, Tara always does everything so well in terms of color mm -hmm. and making things look so great and so professional. So it really is, it's not just this random little outdoor winter market. No. This is going to be Yeah, we've doubled cool in size space. from last year. So. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's the buzz. Yeah, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's, 
we're really looking forward to it. It's, mm -hmm. it's bigger, um, we're mm -hmm. coming back, it's better than it was last year. Mm -hmm. So um, we're really excited about all the buzz that was last year and mm -hmm. we're just hoping to carry that forward this year. And that's a good thing too, parking is yes. free. Yes. Right? <laughs> yeah, again, it's sometimes you know parking can be at a premium, but for us, parking is free, people mm -hmm. can come in, it's easy access, no charge to get in. Right, correct. Right, yes. and yeah. of course, while you're there, you've got Terra, you can shop at Terra, get exactly. your indoor tropical plants because you need to have those in your house. And, yeah. uh, you know, there's lots of options for people to do. Okay, so let's uh, let's give people, you know, an idea of the overall experience for, you know, going into the market that day. You, you said it runs from 10 until 3, three every right. day. Yeah, on okay. Saturdays. On Saturdays, right. right. Saturdays right up until April. Yeah. Um, you know, I think, you know, obviously we're not giving out all of the details of no. every vendor right yeah. now because it's something that is, you know, is growing as we're, as we're, as we're speaking. But, um, you know, just to, are most of the vendors local just to this area? Yes. Yeah. yeah there are a lot of farms in the community from mm -hmm. right around here. Mm -hmm. um, we have a lavender farm coming. Mm -hmm. um, we'll have salsa, guacamole, popcorn, hot sauces. Um, jams, preserves, just to give you an idea of some of the mm -hmm. other um, vendors that are going to be there. Mm -hmm. um, on the opening day, we're having a food truck rally, so we are mm -hmm. planning on having 14 food trucks come. That is and, phenomenal yes. to me because generally when we, we talk about food trucks, we are basically seeing one or two or three. Yeah. But 14, 14. I don't know how we're going to fit them. <laughs> how are we going to fit them? <laughs> And the variety of food on the food trucks is just amazing as well. Wow. Yeah. That is actually yeah. going to be quite, uh, and, and what was the kickoff day again? Uh, January the 11th. January 11th. And so that's when we're going to have our food truck right. rally. Um, and then moving forward, we're going to have three food trucks a week. So you can okay. always expect to see food trucks there. That's cool. And different food trucks every week that you come, so that you always have a variety. And so again, that's what we're talking about, um, maybe not having breakfast or lunch before exactly. you come, <laughs> and literally eating your way through. Yeah, come hungry. <laughs> yeah, coming through the festival like that's actually like pretty a uh, pretty awesome fun experience to do so. Um, okay, so basically we want to remind people that uh, this winter market is special to Terra. It right? is our market. Yes, <laughs> right. It is. It's the Terra at Home Market. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is the second year we mm -hmm. had it last year, mm -hmm. um, and uh, and then this year obviously. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Okay. Very very cool. Okay. So um, again, ten to three every Saturday starting January 11th running right up through April and uh, good times for families and good times for all. Right and so follow us on Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, we're the Terra at Home Market mm -hmm. on Facebook. Okay. Um, we have a ton of followers. We post our vendor list. Mm -hmm. We post the food trucks that are coming each week. Cool. Um, other vendors post stuff, unique products that they're going to be bringing at the market. So definitely follow us on Facebook. Okay. It's, um, a great way for us to communicate mm -hmm. uh, with the people coming to the market. And that's what I was mentioning about how the buzz was really coming through Facebook last year because mm -hmm. people were just in it and that's the great way right for people to really find information nowadays so yeah. definitely do check out the Facebook page and then that way um, you know you can find out what's happening and uh, and again more and more information will be coming out as uh, as time passes. So. Exactly yeah. I just uh, posted some of the vendors okay. uh, yesterday and we're okay. going cool. to be posting the vendors um, coming up to the weeks up to the market just to build some excitement That's neat. so t stay tuned to the Facebook page um, and also on the Saturdays before the market open like before the market we're mm -hmm. going to post the food trucks that are going to be there awesome. as well all right thank you very yeah. much Tara. it's gonna be fun it's the Terra winter home market we'll be back with more where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. The Hamilton Spectator, at work, at home, or on the go. Read us online, in print, or download us to your e-reader. Get the Hamilton Spectator any way you want it.
Good morning, welcome back to Terra at Home. We are down here in Niagara this morning and I'm here with Sue Ann from Sue Ann Staff Wineries. Yes, and hello. Hello, thank you for letting us into your space. So we're actually in your family's home, fifth right. generation, right? Uh, I'm the fifth generation in my family to live yes. in this home. Wow. Seventh generation on the farm. Oh my goodness, unbelievable. Yes. And yeah. you now officially, I mean, you've been growing grapes for, for many, many years, mm -hmm. but you officially have your winery here for about five years now, right? That's the right. Winemaking. Yes, opened in 2009. Mm -hmm. So after 113 years of growing grapes, you decided it was time to open a winery. Oh my goodness, and good for you. So this Thank is definitely, you. that's definitely a project, right? Again, this yes. is all about farming and right. people, again, we were talking about how, you know, it's also glamorous in the whole wine industry, but right. it's farming and it's a <laughs> lot of work. <laughs> it is, it is, you know, it is agriculture. This is, um, mm -hmm. and that's what makes it so exciting and fun as well. So mm -hmm. um, we're out in the vineyards, growing the grapes, walking the vineyards, uh, making sure everything's all tickety-boo out there, mm -hmm. uh, taking it through to the next stage of making the wine and then now that the winery is open and I have uh, you know, customers coming in it's a whole next stage of mm -hmm. selling it servicing people <laughs> and uh, so it's all different levels of industry really sure. and, uh, and I get a great be... pride out of it oh, yeah, and you should because it's intensive labor sometimes for you like real mm. hard manual labor these hands are hideous <laughs> <laughs> that's right you are a farm chick and I, I love it I am a farm chick every muscle hurts today we were doing ice wine last night it's just uh, ch challenging and that's the cool part so this is what we're talking about we're talking yes. about the ice wine festival yes. and of course kicking off next week and running mm -hmm. for three weekends and uh, that's the great part of it all is you know we love our wine industry and we appreciate having this area this region that just grows such beautiful grapes and yes. uh, and again it's been growing and growing exponentially over the years mm -hmm. it's so nice to see that it's come this far at right. this point, right? So we get yes. to celebrate it even in the winter. Even in the winter. It's mm -hmm. a great way great way to celebrate being, ca being Canadian. Definitely great way is. to celebrate uh, ice wine. It's, mm -hmm. We're one of the few regions in the world that can make ice wine. Mm -hmm. It's really just Canada, Germany, and Austria. Um, also, this is a, a festival that really brings in international visitors. Mm -hmm. There's lots of people from Japan and China and uh, Korea that come. Lots of people from down in, in the States as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's just a great time to celebrate uh, great wine and great mm -hmm. food and great friends. And that's the cool part about it. So there are indoor components and outdoor components. That's right. Um, mm -hmm. So if you want to just be warm and fuzzy, obviously yes. the big gala is a really fun one for people. That's right. So that launches the whole program mm -hmm. off. Uh, this year will be on Friday, this, uh, January 10th. Mm -hmm. uh, held in the casino. It's a very glamorous night. It uh, it's so black nice. tie if you want it to be, but mm -hmm. you can kind of get away with anything really mm -hmm. and uh, so uh, there'll be over 40 wineries there pouring mm -hmm. wine there will be some of the best chefs of the region there as well yeah, so food stations, food stations. And the best desserts ever mm -hmm. I think my girlfriend and I parked ourselves dancing. at this, the dessert station last year for a really long time <laughs> it's but that's a risk. the thing it's everything so it's, yeah, it's, right. it's dancing yes. and live band yes. it's just a really great night yeah oh it's killer and then mm -hmm. so that launches off that's the indoor component then after that it's outside mm -hmm. and uh, so we launched the first weekend with Jordan's uh, uh, winter wine fest mm -hmm. Uh, every year that festival just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So this year we have a uh, Geraldo and Travel Charger. We have uh, a jacuzzi Fun. station. Nice. Bring your swimsuit and hop in Wow, that's the adventurous Canadian in sport. <laughs> it is. We have uh, close to 30 wineries pouring wine. So it will actually be the largest collection of 20 Valley wines ever poured in one spot ever. So that's fantastic. Mm -hmm. The second weekend uh, we jump over to Niagara on the Lake. Mm -hmm. They shut down Queen Street. Uh, there's different booze all over the place uh, pouring their wines. Mm -hmm. There is an ice wine cocktail competition on the Saturday night Ooh, of the second. How yummy is that? I know. I, I miss it every year. And this year, I no, I'm going. You're a little bit busy, girl. <laughs> You're yes. kind of running around doing a million but things. But you have to make time for a proper ice wine cocktail or ice wine martini. I agree so. with you. You yes. do. You have to make time for that. So that's you the do. second weekend. Mm -hmm. Now the third weekend is a new yes. edition. New edition. That's right. Down in Market Square, St. Catharines. Um, there will be more food, more wine, more bands, more fun. So mm -hmm. that runs on uh, the Friday night and Saturday night. So you can really, for three weekends in January, mm -hmm. celebrate winter, celebrate ice wine, and come down for every weekend and have a boatload of fun. I like the way they did it too, but they've spread it out over the Niagara region mm -hmm. quite nicely. So it does space it out so yes. again as you say you can go to all three mm -hmm. and the great part about these even though it does involve yes wineries you can take your children with you because mm -hmm. a lot of the outdoor events there's lots going on for the kids as well yes. so parents get a little bit of that uh, you know that adult time as well as your kids running around in their snow seats and having all fun right, right? exactly and, and, nice. and we always try to and think of ways to keep the children entertained as well yes. in Jordan at the ice wine festival we'll have uh, marshmallows to roast mm -hmm. and uh, there's be ice carvings for them to look at and stuff like that yeah. too so they, they have a great time as well they as do. mom and dad are having a little and that's the best wine. and then the parents will be more inclined to go out because then that way they can take their children it's easier nice. and it's just a family fun yes. outing right yes and again coming down here and beautiful and of course uh, you know it's been it's been interesting of course with that we, we got hit with snow early on in the season so it all of a sudden puts everybody in that frame of mind like wow mm -hmm. look at this is what this is happening 
this is we are we're already talking about this but again I like the idea that it's pushing right through January it runs for those three weekends but it also involves individual wineries so there's this discovery right. path that we need exactly. to talk about exactly mm -hmm. yes and um, and so if you're going to those big festivals isn't your thing there's a way to enjoy every winery alone so mm -hmm. it is uh, the ice wine passport program so mm -hmm. for forty dollars you buy a passport mm -hmm. and you get the list of all the wineries that are involved there's 40 wineries every winery will have a unique food and ice wine pairing mm -hmm. and so you pick your favorite eight and then hit it um, so but, so, there's, so every wine will have something different mm -hmm. um, there's a there's s'mores there's different marshmallow styles um, mm -hmm. for myself I have a little chocolate station that I'm doing and so it's it's, a, it's so much fun as well so. it's how people want mm -hmm. to take ice wine and and in the pairing that they think works right. best with their ice wine right and it's right? a way to explore ice wine in a different way as well because I think so often we think of ice wine as only a dessert wine Yes. When really we want to explore all the different culinary options you can have ice wine with. So mm -hmm. have it with a salad, have it with some soup. Sure. Uh, actually, you know, kill it with the cheese course as well with mm -hmm. some gargonzola cheese. Absolutely. And um, you know, and it can be dessert on its own. Mm -hmm. I have nothing wrong with uh, blending up some uh, ice wine and vodka, for instance, and making a little ice wine martini. One yes. part ice wine, two sure. parts vodka, shake a shake with ice. <laughs> It's a better day. <laughs> See, there you go, right? Yes. So tell us a little bit about your ice wine in particular. Right, mm -hmm. yes. Um, right, well, that actually was boring. Okay, so let's do okay, it. Okay, all right. all right. Well, this is the 2007 Riesling ice wine. Mm -hmm. And so this would have been frozen on the vine till it was down to minus 10 degrees Celsius, mm -hmm. harvested in the frozen night of uh, um, uh, early January 2008. Mm -hmm. um, we take that juice, when it's, pr when it's uh, pressed frozen, it comes out of the press just like a maple syrup almost. Like that's mm -hmm. how thick it is. Wow. Um, it's really tough to ferment, so it takes about um, about three months for it to ferment. This mm -hmm. one took actually nine months to ferment. Oh it just fermented so slow. That's the appreciation there, right there. Oh, the time that yeah. goes into developed in that little bottle. Yes, yes. Right? Challenging like to gold. filter, <laughs> challenging to bottle, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, lots of uh, mm -hmm. lots of work went into it. So, so what do you what do you get from your ice wine? What do you? Mm. Uh, I get. Mm. Uh, yeah, so, mm. <laughs> <laughs> well, ice wine can be so aromatic and mm -hmm. so many fruit flavors that come out of it. So this one, I get some lovely uh, uh, citrus notes and um, uh, some sealiness because it's grown right here in the Niagara Peninsula as well. Mm -hmm. um, so. Uh, this is actually some some uh, candied honey and uh, mm. crystallized honey. That's what Doesn't I'm looking for. So. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, Sue Ann, we really appreciate you allowing mm. us to come into this space. And again, and being down here in Niagara, we encourage people. Again, it's kicking off next weekend. You can pick up the passes um, that so you can tour around to the wineries mm -hmm. and uh, at most wineries anyway, right? You can buy yes. Them, yep. Which is great. And, and NiagaraWineFestival.com. The Niagara, so. They're perfect. NiagaraWineFestival.com. And that yes. way you can find all the information and where all the adventures are and all the wonderful pairings. So cheers. Thank cheers. you very much. Thank you. That's it for now. We'll be up more chair at home. AM 900 CHML is giving you more news when you want it most. Non-stop news weekday mornings 5 till 9, weekday afternoons 3 to 6, with weather and traffic on the 9s. Hear about it first from AM 900 CHML, Hamilton's news talk leader. Good morning. Welcome back to Terra at Home. We're now at uh, Sue Ann Staff's Winery Kitchen, and we have uh, kind of a guest chef that came up the road from Vineland Estates here, Chef Justin Downs. Thank you so much for coming into this space. So obviously not the space you're normally used to cooking in, but uh, we're going to have fun because we're talking about the Ice Wine Festival. Works out perfectly because I was just talking about Ice Wine with Sue Ann, and uh, you're going to prepare something with Ice Wine today. Yes, we will. Thanks mm -hmm. for having me. Uh, mm -hmm. What we'll be preparing is uh, we'll do a, a pan-seared chicken breast, mm -hmm. and we're just going to do a little Ice Wine reduction on it. Perfect. Well, that works out nicely, doesn't yes. it? 
because yes, people does. are afraid sometimes. We were talking about the fact that ice wine doesn't necessarily have to just be for dessert. No, it doesn't. So if you don't enjoy the sweetness of ice wine to drink with dessert, you can cook with it, and there's many options with it. So we, it's fun for us at the winery because mm -hmm. we get to have, it's that season now, mm -hmm. and uh, so we now we get to go into the ice wine. Exactly. Okay, right. so let's talk a little bit about Vineland itself, and, uh, and describe your menu and your food to, uh, to somebody who hasn't been there before. Our menu is uh, quite simple. We try to have some fun. Um, if the customer's not having fun with what they're eating, then they won't enjoy what they're doing. So mm -hmm. we let the, the menu speak for itself. We have lots of farmers on the go, so we like to use the you know the earth, the farm to table kind of concept. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, so and of course paired with lovely wines, yeah, right? Yeah, paired with lovely wines. We are in the heart of wine country, mm -hmm. so that's uh, we do uh, great lyrics with Brian, the winemaker, so we have some fun yeah. to use his raw ingredients too. And that's so. fun, right? Because as a, as a winemaker and a chef coming together and making that all happen and all those tastes just work perfectly, mm -hmm. it, uh, it just makes for a better experience. It right? does, it does. And that's the thing, a lot of people, really one of the highlights in people's lives is to go out for a really fantastic meal, mm -hmm. and uh, that's what Vineland Estates is about, right? Just going in there and ha sitting there for hours and hours until you kick them out, right? That's right. We have uh, <laughs> the, we, the one... Uh, wine course, uh, the five course wine pa pairing dinner mm. is uh, is amazing because you get to try all these lovely foods, small little taste bites with uh, five courses of wine too. Oh, so, isn't that, and that yeah. is, it really is an experience in it itself, It is, right? and you can't get rid of them, they sit there for hours, so <laughs> that's the... <laughs> Been there, done that. Okay, so that's the great part about coming down again for part of the, you know, the festival and all of that. Again, you know, you go in and you have a great meal and, and enjoy what we have here down in Niagara. So why don't we talk a little bit, of, let's get right into this let's lovely right into, uh, yeah. chicken breast that you're making. So you. the chicken breast from Cumbria Meats, we all, he He's our local farmer, and what we're going to do is we're just going to let the food speak for itself. We're not mm -hmm. going to do much, so we're just going to put a, a little bit of um, a little bit of salt mm -hmm. and a little bit of pepper, and that's pretty much it. I don't want to manipulate it too much, mm -hmm. and we're just going to pan here. We're going to get a nice crispy skin on that. So okay. we have our pan here, nice and hot. We're just going to put it on. And with searing, you want to just leave that alone, right? Yes, you don't we want to be do. Yes, we that. do. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm just going to we're going to pan here. We're just going to mm -hmm. let the the pan just all do its those work nice and mm -hmm. low, mm -hmm. and, um, and how long how long are you doing that? Like, are you just kind of are you able to do you check it a little bit just to make sure? I mean, you being a chef, you know yourself how long. But somebody at home that's trying this, do this right now, they want to sear something. Well, you, you, what you want is you want your pan nice and nice and hot, mm -hmm. and then get that nice crisp sear. Yep. A little bit of oil, which we already put in the pan, okay. and then you don't want to touch it. You want the the skin to crisp up and you'll let it naturally release itself from the pan. Mm -hmm. Because if you're doing moving it around and you're checking it constantly, you could rip the skin. Right. Okay. And so eventually you're going to sear that right down, and right. then you're going to bake it. We're going right? to bake it. We're going to roast the oven yes. about 400 degrees. Mm -hmm. And after we're done that, we're going to uh, we're going to deglaze with some of the lovely ice mm -hmm. wine here, um, and then. Add some pistachios, some thyme, and some lemon zest. Mm, okay, that sounds kind of cool. I like this yeah. idea. All right, so uh, now, you're, do, does it matter what kind of pan you're using when you're searing? Uh, it doesn't matter. What we have mm -hmm. is uh, we have our um, our black pans. We would call them, and they're yes. nice and thin. Right. But any non-stick pan would work. Okay, that's um, key though. You don't want you, 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 non-stick is fine. Non-stick is okay. fine. Because I um, don't think you can do it. <laughs> no, non-stick's fine. This is just okay. the pans that we use in the winery a lot. These are great okay. for fish too, because then that uh, helps fish not sticking. Ah. Okay, good tip. All right, so let you do your action there. How's it coming along? So we're just coming along, so you oh, can just start to see it starting to color up a bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I like, again, how you've just kept it very simple. As you say, a lot of times people want to um, almost over-season their meat, but you notice when you're working with chefs, a lot of times it's just about the salt and pepper. It is just about it's salt. And we, and we treat all our ingredients at the winery like that. We don't mm -hmm. want to, we want the, the ingredients to speak for itself. Right. You've got all these great vegetables from these farmers that they're putting their love and their care into it. Mm -hmm. I don't want to manipulate it. I want right. to showcase what they're offering me right. to the customer. So. Right, right. And as you're saying, you're using Cumbria Farms meat as well, so you're getting a good piece of meat. Yeah. And again, as you said, good vegetables. So you're going to feel to taste the earthiness from the vegetables. You don't need to be putting no, a lot exactly, of them. No, exactly, exactly. That looks amazing. Yeah. So you know, it's just starting to crystal now. Mm -hmm. You start to see that caramelization of the skin mm -hmm. and of the meat. Um, so we'll let that sear for another second. Then we're going to okay. put in our pan, and then we'll deglaze with the. Okay. Water. So you're just getting a pan, parchment paper. Parchment paper in the oven for four minutes. That's that's pretty quick. Yes. And that's a good part about chicken, right? It does qu qu pretty quickly it does. as well. I think that I like the concept of doing the, the pan searing and then the oven because you're getting color and flavor. Exactly. One mm -hmm. thing, like we'll leave the, like, a lot of uh, what we'll do is here, we let it slowly do it here mm -hmm. so it doesn't take as much in the oven and that way it stays nice and moist too in the pan. Ah, okay, because yeah. you're locking in the juices, Exactly, right? you're locking the juices with okay. those uh, searing on both okay. sides. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right, I like it. All right, so we should probably try to do this uh, yeah. Let you do your thing. Obviously, the magic of television where it's like, oh, it's cooked. Yeah. <laughs> but um, so again, ice wine. Grab that bottle of ice wine at home. Don't be afraid 
to use your ice wine cooking. So it doesn't have to be no, just for dessert, no, as we doesn't. were mentioning. Take it out and try this out. Exactly. All right, so show exactly. us what you're gonna do. So we're just gonna put a couple of gloves in here. Mm -hmm. And you'll see all, and all that is, it, all that, um, all the juice that would have come out of the kitchen, you're adding that into the, mm -hmm. the chicken. Mm, and yes. then uh, we're gonna take um, some pistachios. Mm, sounds good. <laughs> a little bit of thyme. And we're just going to take um, a little bit of lemon zest. So pistachios, pistachios, thyme, and lemon. Lemon zest. Lemon zest. Very good. And we're just going to let that uh, simmer down as we put the chicken breast in the oven. Okay, so when, when you are, uh, break down the term of deglazing. Deglazing. Mm -hmm. So deglazing is taking a hot, hot pan, mm -hmm. adding a little bit of wine, and that, what it does, it releases, it releases all the particles at the bottom of the pan. Mm -hmm. And that just incorporates all that goodness and all that flavor into mm -hmm. uh, that killer sauce that we're going to make in and a second. And you've burned off the alcohol at this yeah. point, right? Yeah, so that's you're right. left with the sweetness well, from that. Well, we didn't burn off the, the alcohol. Flavor. We don't want to burn off. That's not part completely? of it. No, really? not completely. Okay, so yeah. it's not. Okay. No. All right, so basically what we're gonna do is we'll have that, uh, again, that chicken in the oven, and we'll uh, have this, uh, we'll kind of continue to make sure this is gonna be like the best sauce ever. It will be. It and will be uh, we'll put it all together. We'll go to break and we'll come back and we'll put this all together and plate it for you. Perfect. We'll be right back with you. where color lives. You've sat under them and built forts in them. You've swung from them and fell out of them. You've even fallen in love under them. Trees have always held a special place in our hearts and memories. A natural beauty, trees will grow with you and your family and bring color and nature into your world. For your assurance of quality, look for trees and shrubs with the medallion plant tag. Medallion plants, locally grown, the pride of Niagara. Good morning, welcome back to Tara at Home, and uh, we have now moved on, and all so many wonderful things have happened in the break, yes, and yes. Uh, let's complete this plate, shall we? Perfect, yes. So we've just taken our chicken breast of the oven, mm -hmm. we got our reduction all nice and mm. uh, nice and reduced. It looks awesome. Uh, one of the signature, uh, not signature dish, but we're on the menu at Vineland right now, we have a uh, spetzel, which is a German-style dumpling, mm -hmm. um, boiled, and then we just sear it in some of that... Um, some canola oil, so we're just going to put that on the bottom. What else is in there? What I did is I tossed a little bit of goat cheese in there, so oh. normally there'd be some milk in this butt, so we used a little goat milk. Goodness me. <laughs> um, again, some of the vegetables from some of our local farmers, we got some uh, turnips that I poached actually in Weiss wine, mm -hmm. some rapini and some uh, carrots from um, Cookstown Greens up in uh, Cookstown, Ontario. Mm -hmm. So we'll just put those so on the side. you poached them in ice wine I, as well. We did. Nice. Just turnip has that earthy flavor, so we mm -hmm. try to add just a little bit of sweetness to it, but not much. Mm -hmm. And again, here's our beautiful, beautiful. beautifully seared chicken breast. Look at that. Lovely balanced little meal. Mm -hmm. Getting all kinds of good flavors in there. And we're going to just finish off. Okay, so now look at how that sauce is reduced, right? Yeah, so that was about half a half a bottle of ice wine, and we just reduced it down to about two spoonfuls. And then you have a half a bottle for whatever else. See you exactly. later. <laughs> Add, add, add to your dessert. Oh, look at that. That's lovely. And then mm. we'll just finish off a little garnish. So again, I'm obviously encouraging people to come down to Niagara and, uh, and be part of the Ice Wine Festival and all what comes with that. There's just so many lovely things. So what is that herb? This is a little fennel crust. Fennel just adds a little bit of height really? to this. Yeah. Look at that, how beautiful. Yeah. And again, this is what you know when you've got a real chef yes. from Vineland Estates. And of course, one of the many places that you can come and visit and enjoy those uh, lovely five course meals that we talked about with all the pairings. And that's what brings everybody down to Niagara is because of the lovely wine that we have here and the lovely cuisine. So thank you. Thank you very Good much. Good stuff. Thank you. Gorgeous. That's it for now. That's it for Tara at home. Have yourself a great weekend.